Today at Deutsche Auto Parts, we're going to be doing a DSG service with Charles from HumbleMechanic.com on a Mark VI GTI. So here we have our service kit, and what would be included in that kit is five liters of fluid, a filter, and then a filter gasket. Uh, and then some of the kits will have the option of the drain tool or fill tool required for the DSG. This kit that we're going to be installing the vehicle today is going to be Liquimoly. We also offer kits with the Volkswagen fluid, just something to be aware of that you want when you're looking at DSG fluid is it has to meet the same spec as the OEM fluid, which the spec on that is TL52182. And that is something that you'll find on our Liquimoly bottles and any fluid that you install in your DSG must have that, otherwise you can compromise the warranty on your transmission. And this tool does work with both the Liquid Molly and the DSG? That is correct. These, the tool works with both Liquid Molly and Volkswagen bottles. All right, guys, like Paul said in the intro, we're going to be doing a DSG service on a 2012 GTI. Um, personally, I like to start on the top end and work my way down. Uh, this vehicle did have an aftermarket intake. We went ahead and removed that just because it really doesn't apply to most of you guys. Um, you can actually do the filter without taking out the battery, but um, it does make it quite a bit easier to get to the filter and clean up any oil that you spill if you take the battery out. So I'm going to remove the battery and show you guys exactly where the filter is at. There's actually two tabs right here that if you push in, this comes out a little easier. 10 millimeter to take off both battery cables. I like to always remove the negative side first and tuck it in this spot right back here, makes it nice and easy. Pull the positive side off. And uh, it's a 13 millimeter socket to remove the, uh, the hold down for the battery, which uh, Paul's nice enough to grab me here since it was one of the tools I forgot. All right, so I'm gonna run this 13 millimeter out to take the hold down out for the battery. This is one of those parts that if you drop, it likes to go into the abyss on top of the transmission. So be careful pulling that out from there. And we lift the battery out. That one's nice because it's got a handle on it. All right, now our battery is out of the way. Um, we can go ahead and take the tray out. Again, you can get to the filter without taking this tray out, but it does make it a whole lot easier. And there's traditionally just three 10 millimeter bolts that hold this in. This particular vehicle has some aftermarket wiring so I'm going to grab something and uh, get that loose. All right, I went ahead and undid the bracket for uh, this aftermarket wiring. I'm going to pull the screws out of the tray and set them on the cowl. This battery tray just kind of lifts up and out. Sometimes you have to massage it just a little bit. And there we go, our battery tray is out of the way. We're going to get up tight here on the uh, on the filter and show you guys how to remove and install and replace the filter. All right, now we got a really great view here of the the filter housing for your uh, for your DSG filter. Now you will lose a little bit of fluid doing this service, so you'll want some rags or paper towels or something to catch to catch any you might lose. It's not a ton, and the colder the engine is, actually, the less fluid you'll lose but I like to just stuff a few towels or rags down there to, uh, to catch as much as I possibly can. The socket you'll need is a 24 millimeter socket, and this actually really couldn't be easier to change this filter. Um, I like to loosen it nice and slow so that I don't sling a bunch of fluid everywhere. Now that our filter's loose, I'm gonna get a couple more paper towels. If you're doing this in your driveway, you want to spill as little fluid on the ground as possible. And I'm just going to lift this housing up, 
turn it upside down so I don't dump more fluid out. Set this off to the side, and now you'll see your filter um, right here at the top. Again, get some paper towels. Make sure you guys, if you're doing this change, you dispose of all this stuff properly. Um, there, it sits on a little dowel, and what I like to do is I like to pull it off the dowel and just let it sit there for a minute or so in order to drain any fluid down. You don't want to just snatch the filter up and dump, uh, dump DSG fluid all over the top of your transmission. So that's it. We got the fluid out. We're going to install a new filter here really quick. Now, kind of like when you took the filter out, I like to set it on the dowel and ease it on. If you just smash it on with your hand, you're going to launch fluid everywhere. And, uh, you know, keeping this stuff clean is, is one of my goals anyway. Um, next up, we're going to replace the seal. I also like to clean the threads of the housing, um, get any gunk or dirt or anything that might have set in the threads while you were taking it out. That can actually cause leaks. And the best way to take this filter seal out is with a small pick, um, which I don't have, so we're just gonna use the screwdriver. Just kind of get underneath it and roll it around like that. Set that to the side. Kind of like we did with the, the, um, the seal for the filter. We wanna get just a little bit of fluid, make sure the filter housing's clean, lay it in the, the valley there, and just stretch it around. And then I like to go around it a couple of times, make sure it's properly seated. Take your cup, hopefully you've drained all the fluid out. And I like to start it by hand and just turn it till I can't really turn it anymore by hand. And then grab my 24 millimeter wrench or socket, whatever makes you happy. And give her a snug down. Now, like I mentioned before, you can do this with the battery and battery tray installed. Um, it does make fighting that a little bit challenging, but it's not too bad. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the battery back in, the tray back in. I'm gonna clean up any fluid that I might have dropped down uh, on the transmission housing and uh, show you guys how to drain the fluid and replace the fluid. All right, now that we got the filter changed, I'm gonna go ahead and install the battery tray and reinstall the battery. It basically goes the same way that it came out. Um, there's a couple of things that whenever you replace a battery or disconnect the battery on your Volkswagen, you wanna make sure that you do. You wanna make sure that you restore what we call restoring electrical power. Um, that basically means setting your clock back to the right time. Um, the more important one is resetting the pinch protection on the windows and uh, that's pretty easy to do. Basically just run the windows up till they stop and then hold the button for a second. Let go of the button and then hold it for a second and uh, that'll relearn pinch protection. So I'm gonna zip these down, put the battery back in and we're gonna reinstall this intake and uh, we'll be good to go. One more tip on installing the battery. When you put the cables on, if you take a flat blade screwdriver and open that a little bit, it'll actually let you seat the cable all the way down and that'll make for a little bit better connection. You can see now the battery cable is all the way down on the post. And there we go. One vehicle battery installed. All right, so we are nice and comfy cozy here underneath this GTI. Um, transmission here on the driver's side. The drain plug for the DSG is right here. It's a 14 millimeter Allen. And we're gonna go ahead and break that loose. And what I like to do is I like to turn it out a little bit and then actually take the socket off the ratchet and do it by hand. That lets you control 
the drain plug a little bit better. Um, depending on the temperature of your car is going to be dependent on how fast this comes out. Our car is nice and cold today, so it should come out fairly slow. And you can see we got a little fluid here. Don't forget to make sure you have something to catch all this fluid in. Now, there's actually two drain plugs, sort of, on this setup. There's this main first drain plug that actually keeps the fluid in the car. Then there's one that's like the level checking plug. So I'm gonna let this drain, and uh, then I'm gonna come back and show you guys where the, uh, the other plug is inside this transmission. All right, so our first round of draining is all finished. Um, I'd mentioned that there's actually two plugs in this transmission. The other plug is actually in the same hole, just a little bit further up. Now for this one, you'll need an eight millimeter Allen, but you need one that's a little bit longer um, in order to reach all the way up in this drain hole. So I'm gonna take this, and this is only hand tight, so you don't need any tools beyond the eight millimeter. And I'm gonna rotate it out all the way now you'll see it if you're looking up you'll see it start to hit the end of the the plug hole and as I rotate it out we'll start to get a little bit of fluid flow you can see that there now you're gonna get quite a bit more fluid this time and it's gonna come out a little bit faster so you want to make sure you have plenty of uh, space in your drain bucket so I'm gonna just kind of ease this on out and you'll see this plug right here. So this, this does take a little bit longer on this drain. So we're gonna let this drain and come on back and show you guys how to fill it. All right, so we got all our fluid drained out. Um, now we're gonna go through the process of refilling the transmission. Uh, first thing I'm gonna put the, the black little uh, drain stick back in. Um, just like taking it out, it's really only hand tight, so no need to uh, to put a ratchet or anything on it to, to get it tight. Once it's in there, just give it a little twist. That's all good and snug. Next, we're gonna hook up the, the fill tool. Now, this is a gravity filling tool. Um, this end, all it does is screw right into the drain plug hole, just like our drain plug came out. And as I hit myself in the face with it a few times, um, so you get this nice and snug. This is just plastic, so there's no need to really wrench down on it or anything. And put the tube back in. And then we're gonna go up top, hook the other end to a bottle and show you guys how to fill it. Okay, we got our tool installed on the bottom end and this is a gravity fed tool. So what we're gonna need to do is go ahead and hook the bottle up to the tool. Now, I always like to shake these bottles, not a ton, but just a little bit. Um, what can happen is the detergent packages can actually settle out differently. And you wanna make sure you get a nice even, even flow of fluid. So we're all hooked up on the tool. We rotate it upside down and there we go. We can see we got fluid flowing. Now, <laughs> one thing I actually learned the hard way, don't squeeze these bottles. Um, you can actually squeeze it hard enough and shoot fluid out or knock the tool right off. So um, tech tip of the day, don't, don't squeeze these bottles. Uh, this does take a little bit of time, so we're going to go ahead and fill this up and show you guys how to wrap it up. All right, we are on to our fifth and final bottle. Um, quick tip, we actually poked a hole in the bottom of the bottle as long as it's turned upside down and that actually makes it flow a little tiny bit faster. Um, you want to allow about five minutes, five to seven minutes per bottle depending on the temperature of the fluid. Um, so basically it's a lot of time standing just like this. All right, so we're back underneath. Um, we've put all five liters of uh, our DSG fluid back in. Next, we gotta actually put the outer drain plug in. Now, this is the part where you might get a little bit messy, but if you take your time and have a, a nice touch on it, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I'm gonna slowly turn the tool out and try to not spill a bunch of fluid that we just put in this car. When you start to feel the tool come to the end of the threads, you'll want to stop and get your drain plug 
ready to go. I always put the drain plug on the socket with the nice new crush washer on it so that I can do this really fast, hopefully. Maybe. There we go. Now you can actually do this with the car running and you might lose a little bit less fluid, but I always like to do it with the car off just out of convenience for working with the tool. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and leave any questions, ideas, or feedback in the comments below.